Well, do you know what's in your drinking water? A shocking Associated Press investigation found various pharmaceuticals in the drinking supplies of at least 41 million Americans. Tainted water was found from New Jersey to California. NBC's Tom Costello is following the story from Washington. Tom, I've been dying to ask somebody some questions about this story. First of all, what kinds of drugs are we talking about? And, and how dangerous is this? Pretty, uh, pretty wide range. Here's the drinking water in Washington, D.C. They found six pharmaceuticals in our drinking water here. They include ibuprofen, caffeine, monocin, and about three or four others. In Philadelphia, they had 56 pharmaceuticals or byproducts. They range everything from epilepsy medication to mental health medicines to uh, pharmaceuticals that really run the gamut. Here's the bottom line from the Associated Press on the study they did. It was, as you mentioned, a five-month investigation involving the the AP investigative team, 50 major cities in 50 states were looked at, and drugs were found in the water of 24 major cities. We're talking 41 million Americans here who drink that water. So what's in the water? Everything from acetaminophen and ibuprofen to mood stabilizers, antibiotics, angina, heart, as well as cholesterol drugs, and even sex hormones. The trouble here, Meek, is that the federal government does not test specifically for pharmaceuticals in the water. And in fact, there there is no way to scrub water that is in a treatment plant for pharmaceuticals. And so now we have a situation where states and cities across the country are just starting to realize that there are the remnants of pharmaceuticals in the drinking water. All of that said, we should emphasize, we're talking here about parts per billion or trillion really minute traces of pharmaceuticals that are in the water. And you say, well, how did it get there? Well, without getting too graphic, all of us who take medication for one thing or another, we don't absorb all of it. It is excreted. Uh, it gets into the sewage system, into the water treatment plants. And then, because water treatment plants can't scrub it all out, if any of it, it just kind of dilutes on into the water system. Sometimes it gets into the water table, into wildlife, and then into reservoirs. It goes back into the water treatment site, into the water treatment plants. I wonder if there's going to be, you know, long-term study about effects of this down the road. And, uh, but, but I guess initially, Tom, the question I'm sure you're asking today is, is there anything the government can do about this? Yeah, and the EPA says it's concerned about it, but you know, we, we don't yet know, and, wa and water treatment utility plants say they are convinced that there is no immediate threat to anybody out there. That said, I did a story about four years ago in which we found a river in Colorado, and now we know there are many rivers, in which the fish were turning from male to female. And the reason was because there was too much estrogen in the water. The, the natural female hormone was literally turning male fish into female fish, and the thinking was that this is a canary in a coal mine. So now the question is, what's the impact on humans? Yeah, that's the next one. Tom Costello on this story from Washington. Thank you very much.